Hello and welcome to episode 3 of The Australian Runner, a show about running and everything running related. I'm Ben and with me is Chris. Hi everyone. Okay, let's get started. In today's episode, we'll be talking about different types of training sessions. So first of all, Chris, what sort of types of training sessions are there? There's three main types of running. There's fartlek sessions, continuous and in tool. Okay, how about you take us through each of those one at a time? All right, starting off with fartlek? Yeah, sure. All right, cool. So fartlek basically comprises a mixture of hard running efforts and then jogging or floating. A float would be a running break, but you're running at a fair, a reasonable pace. It should be comfortable, but it's not literally just jogging on your, the tips of your toes, not moving anywhere. You're actually still moving, so it'd be like a pace that requires some effort, maybe something like 200 metres in 45 seconds or something along those lines. Okay, so about like 70%, 75%? Yeah. That sort of effort? Yeah. So a fair bit less than your hard effort sections. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you still got to be moving. Yeah, not walking. And how hard would those hard sessions be? Depending on how long the hard periods are, it's basically as fast as you could go, or you just got to push it really quite hard. Fart leg sessions are mainly designed for like 5K, 3K, 1500 meter work, or even longer. So they're probably at th- that type of pace. Okay, so do you have any favourite fart like running session? Do you use that sort of session very much? Uh, I use it a little bit. One of the good ones is called quarters, so you do eight times 400 metres with a 200 metre float in between and see how fast you can do it. Oh yeah, that sounds pretty pretty tough. Yeah, it definitely is. So what are some of the advantages of using a fart like session as opposed to something else like just going for an hour long run? Um, the change of pace is really good for the body because you train up above the point where lactate builds in your muscles and then the easier float sections, your body tries to get rid of all the burning sensation from it before you start training again. So it forces your body to flush it out as quickly as you can. Right. So I'm assuming if you do a lot of fart like sessions, your body will get better at flushing out all the lactic acid. Yeah, that's the aim. All right, so now you said there were three. So then the second one you've got written down here is continuous running. So can you take us through that one briefly? Yeah, this one's the most straightforward. It's basically where you just run for a certain period of time and that's your whole session, just running, just straight. No rest, no breaks, just solid. What would you recommend as a distance? So if you were... Training for like a 5k, like doing the couch to 5k run, they've got it sorted for you. But what if you were going a little bit further or a little bit less, say like 800 metres or maybe 1500 or maybe if you're training for a 10k, what sort of continuous running sessions would you do? There's three categories of continuous running that you can do. You can do easy mileage, tempo and threshold runs. Easy mileage... That, you just build up slowly, and depending on how far your distance is, you should run longer and longer. So marathon runners go out and run, like, three-hour long runs on a Sunday morning at easy mileage pace. They can do that, whereas eight 1,500-metre runners probably do 90 minutes for yeah. a longest run of the week, and then they do some half an hour or 40 minutes. Yeah, so you're running a fair bit longer than the... Um, event that you want to race in or try to achieve. Yeah. And how do you know how fast to run for an easy run? So you don't, like, push yourself too far or not go fast enough and not get the full benefit of it? Uh, One way to do it is work from your 5km PB. If you divide it by, I think, 0.75, it should be about the pace where your aerobic capacity is maintained and there are some small benefits about that but go by feel as well and it should be tough you should be able to talk to wherever you are i think it's in the lower end of the heart rate scale i think about 70 percent yeah yeah all right and you mentioned threshold and tempo so what are they both of them are continuous runs 
but at a fairly hard effort. So tempo runs are usually 40 to 50 minutes long and run at a pace that requires concentration from the athlete, usually a comfortably hard pace. Our threshold runs, on the other hand, are a bit shorter, maybe 20 minutes, but they're run harder again, and they're at, they should be run at the point where lactic acid or lactate start to build up in your system, and it's at that point that you should be running around. To find what where those are, you can base it off your 5 km PB. So for a threshold, it should be your PB divided by 0.93, or you could times it by 108%. And that or threshold pace is the pace that you could be able to sustain in an all-out hour run. So for elites, that's half marathon pace. But for us mere mortals, it's probably 12 to 15 kilometers an hour or about four to five minute K pace. Even heart rate can be used. So thresholds are around 87 to 92% of maximum heart rate. Of course, it increases the fitter you are, mm. so you'd be at the top end of the scale. Just starting off, you'd probably be, you could even be down to 85%. And tempos are slightly less than all of those guides. I think you divide your 5K PB by about 0.87 yeah. for a tempo run, and then just less on the heart rate and just a fraction less, really. And obviously these formulas are good for a base to start off, but each run is obviously different and better at different distances. You might be a sprinter, you might love 20k races. Um, so after a couple of runs, you can sort of get into the rhythm of how fast a tempo run is. So as yeah. you said, um, like elite athletes are in that 85 to 92% of max heart rate, but you might be a bit lower, a bit higher, you might find that your PB time for the 5K needs to be redone after a couple of weeks if you're getting a lot better. So just make sure you listen to your body because you want to be pushing yourself and getting a maximum um, benefit out of all the runs that you do. And that leads us to the last sort of training type that you've got written down here, and that's interval training. Yeah, this is the most straightforward, probably the most popular or second most popular type of training. Basically, where you have periods of hard effort followed by periods of complete rest or just walking. For example, you could do 10 by 400 metres with a minute rest in between each. So you run hard for your 400 metre rep and then rest, just hang around, just stand still for that one minute. And your body just tries to recover stationary with no extra work. So this is a lot... Fairly similar to fart like training, yeah. but instead of jogging in between your hard um, running periods, you just basically stand still or, well, you're not moving, basically. You can, yeah, just a slow walk or yeah, something around. Slow walk. Obviously, it's not advisable after doing an all-out 400 or 200 metre to stand completely still because of the lactic acid in your legs. Just walk around to sort of um, massage it out, but... It, you're not going for an extra 200 metre run in between your 200 metre hard sessions. Yeah. Um, this interval training can be used for sprinters as well as middle and long distance runners, so everyone can utilise it. You just have to pick the distance of your reps and your recovery. So if you're one aerobic, your ratio of rest to recovery should be less than one, one to one. So if you run for a minute, rest for a minute should be the absolute... Uh, maximum more likely you should run for five minutes and rest for a minute again if you're a sprinter it'd be the other way around you'd run for a minute and rest for five minutes yeah because you're trying to get an absolute maximum speed that you can out of your muscles exactly a, a favorite session potentially i know the melbourne track club one of their favorites is eight by one kilometer with only one minute recovery so that's probably about three minutes for them on and then one minute rest so they've still got, they're definitely in that aerobic zone. Yeah. So now that we know our three main types of training session, fart leg, continuous and interval, how will we go about using all these three together in one training plan? Basically, a good training plan should have all three types of sessions written into it. Most training plans would have three tougher sessions a week and they would in, those sessions would either be interval or fart leg. 
threshold or tempo runs. And with the days in between, they're either rest or would be easy, continuous mileage run slowly just to get some sort of benefit. So you'd be have tougher sessions every other day with easy days in between. Uh, I think that just about wraps up our chat for the week about different types of training sessions and hopefully everyone found that useful to find out different ways to spice up your training and how you can bring that all together in one cohesive training plan. So now, thanks for that, and now we're on to the news. Cool. Big week of athletics news this week. On last Thursday, we had the Zatapak 10 run at Lakeside Stadium in Melbourne, and there was upsets galore. Well, maybe not in the men's. Patrick Chernan won comfortably in a time of 27.59, just missing out on the world qualifier by just 14 seconds. Ahead of Stuart McSwain and Brett Robinson, I was watching the race. I think Brett might have uh, eased up in the last couple of laps. That's how Stewie passed him. Over in the in the women's, Camille Buscombe won in 32.34 ahead of Bridie Delaney, 33.04, who is now the Australian champion in her debut 10,000 metres. So pretty good going. Same with Patrick Chernan, who was his debut 10K on track. I think he'd run a couple of cross-country titles and the like, like the NCAA cross-country he won the other week. Eloise Wellings finished in uh, third spot in 33-19. Also, on Saturday night in New South Wales, Spankstown, there was the Thomas Alby Mile, and Jordan Guzman cleaned up the field and won 358 PB for him, broke four minutes again. He's had a really good start to the season. Hope he can keep it going this week at the Stegan Spectacular. Brittany McGowan won the women's 1500 metres in 425 just ahead of a couple of other big names. There was the Queensland State Relays up north. The women's 4x1 was won by Ignition Athletics Club in 46.55. The men's 4x1 was won by Maruchador in 40.39. Women's 4x4 was also won by Marucci in 351. Men's 4x4 was won by Ignition in 317. Men's 4x8 was won by University of Queensland, 752, and the women's 4x8 was won by the Gold Coast. Men's 4x2, Marucci, so they've done very well over the weekend, winning in 1 minute 24, and the women's 4x2 was won by Ignition in 140. Finally, the distance medley relays, the men's was won by Marucci in 633, and the women's was won by Main Harriers in 637. There was also the Australian 50km Walking Championship held at Faulkner Park in Melbourne and Matt Griggs took out the title in 4 hours 36 as the only competitor in the field (laughs) over that distance. There was also men's and women's 20km Invitational walks and the Kiwis cleaned up again with Quinton Roo winning the men's race in an hour 24 and Alana Barber winning the women's in an hour 32. The biggest news to come out of the meet, besides the Australian record, uh, the Australian national champion was Declan Tingey from WA, who set the Australian under 18 10k road race walk record with his performance of 42.36, improving the previous best by 11 seconds. And just other random news over the course of the week James Turner was named Paralympic Rookie of the Year. Of course, he won gold in the Rio Paralympic 800 metres. As well as that, Rowan Browning ran 10.44 for the 100 metres and he's flying at the moment in just domestic competition. So thanks for that, Chris. I think that just about wraps up for the week. Thank you, everyone, for listening and we hope you found that all useful. You can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud and iTunes as The Australian Runner. See you next week. See you then. With Quinton Rue winning the men's race in a minute, minute, an hour 24 and 